Hello folks, welcome back to Outdoors with Bud. I'm your host, Bud Fields. Man, we're having a great time out here today fishing and shooting some future segments and everything, and we're going to be coming back again. And while I'm on that, within a few weeks, maybe a month, I'm trying to get hold of a local conservation officer. He's going to be a guest on Outdoors with Bud. We're going to come right back out to this same location where we can shoot and be around the pond. And if you people have got any kind of questions that you would like to have answered, send them to me. You can email them to me at my email address. It's my name, all one word, budfields at frontier.com. That's F-R-O-N-T-I-E-R dot com, budfield at frontier.com. Send me your questions and I will ask them and we, we will have an answer. And uh, now we try to make it to where it's not too controversial because everybody's got an opinion. I've got mine, you got yours. And the idea is to promote fishing and having a good time, not controversy. But send any of your questions to me, or I suppose you could send them to the Kokomo Lantern and Pat or any of the guys up there will see to it that I get them. But it's going to be probably within the next three to four weeks that we're going to shoot that segment. So try to get those questions to me as soon as possible, okay? Now, in this segment, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to use these crankbaits. Now, i done a podcast and I wrote an article about fishing crankbaits. I talked about the medium divers, the deep divers, the shallow divers, the ones that had rattles and everything. Now, once again, we're fishing this private pond and the weather is beautiful. We got sunny day, it's a little breezy and the water is, is pretty cold, it's pretty cool. But at least not 30 to 40 mile an hour is the way we've had it in the past. And at least we had a dry day today if we can get through this segment without being cursed, we're going to be doing fine. But I'm going to show you how to use some of these crankbaits. And the color that I'm using is not necessarily one of my favorites. But I think I'm, I'm wanting to show you how it works in the water to where you can see how it does work. And with this color here, I think we might be able to do that. But I'm going to be fishing this on, on my 7-foot uh, Grant rod. This is a medium heavy action. And it's, I've caught a lot of fish with this rod, and uh, they're great people. And if you're in the market for a rod, I suggest you get hold of them at rod, grantrods.com. Now, today I'm going to be using, this is supposed to be, they call it a sexy shad pattern. It's got a little blue top, got a little yellow ring on the side, line on the side, and it's got a, a white gray bottom. Now, you can see it's got a short bill, so it, this lure is only going to run two to three foot. Now, if I, if I fish it real quick, it's going to come through the water and kicking real bad. If I slow it down, it's still going to kick, but it won't be as, as drastic. So I'm just going to make an overhand cast and I'm going to throw it out there and I'm going to vary my speed. Now, a lot of times that variation of the cadence, you can cast it out there, you can reel it in and burn it. If the water temperature is warm enough, the fish will hit it. But as cool as it is, they're not wanting to go very far. In order to catch a fish today, I'm going to have to just about put it right on top of their nose. So I'm going to start making some fan casts out here to see what, see what I can do. I'll make sure I've got plenty of room here. Okay, I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to kind of stop it, bring it in and stop it. Two or three reels and stop it. A lot of times when you slow that down and make it come to a stop is when the fish will hit it because he thinks that that's a minnow and it's, and it's hurting. Now I'm going to crank it down there a little bit quicker. I can feel some grass in there, so that's, that's good cover. Yeah, you, you can see that's the thing about fishing crankbait. You catch a lot of weeds and everything. But that, that's a good indicator. All this, all these weeds and stuff is, is real green. That means it's, it's going to hold a lot of oxygen. And that's what the fish needs. A lot of these guys, when they get these ponds, they get an algae bloom. And it messes up everything. It gets the smelling kind of bad. Well, when they kill those weeds, they're taking a lot of the oxygen that the fish need to survive. But a lot of your crankbaits will advertise on the box that when you take them out of the box, the hooks are sharp enough to use right away. I don't, I don't buy that. I always, I always take my time and I, I resharpen the hooks and 
make sure that they are good. Okay, I've got a little erratic action on this one here. I had some weeds on it when it hit the water and it made it track kind of funny. Now, a lot of people catch fish on crankbaits because they call it the idiot bait. Mainly because you can take it right out of the box and cast it out there and reel it in and, and it's possible that you can catch a fish. I think it's because I'm the idiot that buys them. But a lot of fish are caught using crankbaits, especially when the fish are aggressive and they're willing to travel a distance to hit it. But when they're locked down, it's awful hard to convince them it's time to, to bite. Now, your crankbaits will have treble hooks on them. Treble hooks, I'll show you what a treble hook is. It's got basically one shank, but it's got three barbs on it. Then it's got another one on the back, it's the same way. Now, some of the longer crankbaits may even have a third one in there. Now, you might notice a lot of times when you catch a fish, it comes up out of the water. What it's trying to do is throw that lure. If you catch a fish and you tell you can tell if it's a big one or not, try to keep it from coming out of the water because when it comes up, it's actually using the weight of that lure, trying to dislodge it and get the hooks out of its mouth. But once again, check your hooks. The best way to check your hook, I usually just take it like this and I'll drag that hook across my thumbnail. If it's sharp, it will dig in. If it's dull, I'm gonna turn it sideways It'll slide just, just like what that's doing. You want to be able to stick that on your thumbnail and just gently put some pressure on it. And when it digs in, that means it's sharp. If it slides, that means you need to get your file out or your little hone. And every now and then when you fish with it, it'll get rust on the points of the hooks. You want to clean that off and make it look pretty shiny. And you can, you can get crankbaits that goes down to 30, 35 foot. Most of the time in farm ponds, you get, you get a medium to a shallow diver that's only going to run maybe three foot to eight foot. You're going to catch a lot of fish because most of them is going to be in that area. Okay, we're going to make a couple more casts and we're going to, we're going to call it off. See, these fish don't realize I'm trying to make a movie star out of them. We'll put them on, put them on our podcast and make them, make them famous. Can't believe there's only one fish read my articles or watched my podcast. Well, like I say, folks, we're going to be coming back out here again in the near future. And by that time, I, I think the fish are going to be really good. Now, something like what you're looking here at this pond is, is perfect, especially if you've got a kid you're trying to get started in fishing, because I guarantee you, you could come out here with a dozen night crawlers or red worms or some crickets or bee moths and put the kids out here with little bobbers and everything, fish them off the bank, probably let them put their line out there about four or five foot, and we're going to have a blast catching a bunch of fish. While I'm doing this, I'm going to give you an extra pointer. If you've got a, if you've got a bass boat, or I'll just like when I got here, I had my fishing rods in the back of my truck, a lot of times you'll get in a mess. You'll have one fishing pole inside of here and you're going to have to fight to get them out. If you wanted to eliminate that, all you want to do is take whatever lure you got, hook, hook one of the hooks onto that line, okay? Now, you want to pull this line out and rotate that rod. And what you're going to do, you're going to wrap this line around these eyelets just like this. And what that's going to do is there's no way you're going to get that other fishing pole inside of these, that line. So when you go to take this out of your rod box, it'll slide out just like peanut butter and jelly. So you don't have to battle cutting your line and doing all that. So that's a pointer I want to leave with you. I want to thank you folks for joining us today. Once again, we're going to have a conservation officer here uh, probably within the next two or three weeks. If you've got questions, send them to me. I guarantee you. We will go through them and we'll, we'll get them all answered right in front of you. So I want to thank you for joining us and come back again. God bless you and take a kid fishing. <music>